All right, Dan. Dan. Do it with 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 Dan. YouTube. I think I had a little bit too much pre-workout this morning. I'm on my way to uh, the gym. To the gym. Time to get swole. Making all types of gains. Fuck out the weight. Come on, man. Look, she a pretty thing. Look at her. Busting all kinds of nuts. Look at my dad. Going down 1985. One finger in the asshole. Another one on my dad. Guys, do with Dan, having some fun back on the back. What's up, baby? Look at me swerve. Woo, swerve, woo, swerve, oh, swerve, oh, swerve, oh, swerve. Originally, I was gonna do this video about bullying because it seems to be kind of a hot topic right now. And you know, as someone who went through some bullying as a kid, I felt like I could throw into some two cents, you know. But I think I'm gonna wait till I've got my thoughts a little bit more articulated right now. I'm just kind of fucking hyped up. I can't even seem to get my heartbeat low because. Um, jumping around like an idiot and blah 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 pre-workout so I can't I can't really feel like I can give my solid opinion on it right now but what I do want to talk about is the art of lowballing if you don't know what lowballing is um, it's offering someone way less on an item that they're selling than what it's worth or what they have what, what they're asking for the price for example if someone has a 2010 CBR 1000 RR and they're asking uh, $11,000 for it on a Craigslist or you know an ad or something like that and then you proceed to offer them $4,000 because quote unquote it's all you have that would be considered a low ball <laughs> that felt really good that's called a low ball a lot of people get angry at that because it's it's offensive to them because it's not what they have for listed for sale and they want a certain thing blah 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 blah. So that's why it's uh, really inappropriate to lowball someone. It, it's also referring to like hitting someone in the dick with how low you're offering them. That's why it's called lowballing. You know your balls are low. You punch them in the dick. So that would be a lowball. Total dick move to do. But there's an art to doing it. Lowballing someone usually pisses off the person enough to where they won't accept any other offer you have. So let's say someone has a uh, 2002 CBR 600RR, 600 F4I for sale, and they're asking $3,500 or best offer. A reasonable offer to throw at them would be anywhere between $28 to $32,000, $3,200. That would be a reasonable offer. An unreasonable offer would be anything lower than, let's say, $2,300. That would be considered a low ball. But there's an art to doing this where it does three things for you. Um, so the art of low balling that I'm gonna do, that I'm gonna teach you guys, is gonna create three different things for you. One, it's gonna make them not mad at you. It's gonna be completely reasonable and they're gonna understand. So it's they're gonna not be mad at you. So if you ever come up with more money and ask them again after you have more money or they have brought the price down, they'll consider you off without being mad. Two, 
you're not gonna burn that bridge to where they won't respond to you and you won't be as remembered as in like they won't remember you as that asshole that offered him two thousand dollars on a four thousand dollar motorcycle and three it's gonna plant a seed in their head saying that well this is what he's offered me what would I what else would I be willing to take and then they're gonna naturally bring their own price down um, mentally without you even without you even having to say let's say it's four thousand dollars you offer them two thousand dollars they say no that'll automatically bring the price down further in their head like okay maybe I'll consider uh, two hundred dollars less than what I would my bottom dollar is so you've done that and in case you guys are wondering what my skill set what why I feel like I'm qualified to do this um, I've been working in sales literally my whole life I've been doing it since I was young haggling um, pricing stuff like that so I mean I've got a lot of experience in this type of shit I know what I'm talking about when I say how to do stuff like this and um, after you know I buy sell and trade motorcycles a lot cars I do it with cars I do it with guns I do it with everything and there's only been a very few amount of instances where I've lost money and that being said, the only time I've ever lost money on a motorcycle is when I wrecked my R6, and I still sold it for about eight or nine hundred dollars higher than what it probably should have been sold for. So there's an art to what I do. I'm not trying to toot my own horn or be a dick. But I'm just saying, like, what what I do, there's a, there's a specific way and a, a lot of knowledge that comes with it. So this is the way you're gonna lowball someone, and they will actually consider your offer. You know, you're not guaranteed get a confirm out, like a confirm buy out of this but it will make sure that they will not be mad at you as in if you want to go and buy that bike later on and they haven't sold it or they come down in price and you have more money you can still buy it without them completely rejecting you and they will be pissed and you don't have to deal with that that anger of someone uh, you don't have to deal with that like knowledge of someone being angry at you and you don't have to deal with this with like doing that so does that make sense here we go so this is the exact um, message that I have created in my head on how to do this so you're gonna find an ad that's a little out of your price range let's say you've got $2,500 to spend and someone's offering $5,000 or $4,000 on whatever you want this is how you're gonna go about it you're gonna call the person you're gonna call the individual with this in mind that they are off they are asking a little high of what they want to sell just so they can get a certain out of it so they're willing to come off their price a little bit usually unless the ad says firm and then uh, then they're usually 100% firm on their price so you're gonna call them up you're gonna say hey listen I saw your ad on Craigslist or Facebook or YouTube or whatever for the uh, for the item for the item that you're selling and they'll say oh yes yes hello yes the item is still available you say some along the lines of, hi, yeah, so um, I'm looking at it on my phone. I've got the ad pulled up on my cell phone here, but my phone's acting kind of weird. I can't really, uh, I can't really see some stuff. It's like the, the ad's kind of like messed up on my phone, so I can't see everything. I can't see a price. I'm wondering what you're asking. This will make them say the price out loud. They'll say, I'm asking $3,500 uh, for my item. At that point, you say, oh, okay, um, wow. If I had known that, I might not have contacted you. Um, see, I only have $2,200 in my pocket right now. Um, and I'm not, I don't suppose you'd be willing to come down to that price. I've got it right now and I could be there today. You gotta do this on a day where you can come and get it that day, because that's, that's what's gonna be the kicker. You're gonna say, I can come and get it right now. I can come and get the product right now. I've got, I've got $2,200 in my hand. I know it's a little bit less than what you're asking, but if I can come right now, would you consider my price? And then what you're gonna get, you're gonna get like a, an understanding, oh, okay, that's all you have. All right, well, I'm asking a little bit more than that, and this is your, you're gonna get one of two reactions. You're gonna get, well, I'm asking, I couldn't, I, I can't really go below $2,500, and you say you have 22. So, what this has done, look at a little spinning. Can you see it? The little knob is spinning. It's like a, it's like a bulldog that's had his tail cut off and he's wagging it. <laughs> so, this is also gonna tell you their bottom dollar on the price. I can't take more than $2,500. And you've already got 22. This is gonna leave you a couple more windows here. 
would say at this point, I understand, but it's just $200 if you're willing to come down and, and, and meet me at the $2,200, would you, would you let me come today? And they'll say, probably not. But you can do this and say, oh, I understand. Well, would you meet me at $2,350? So you've bridged that gap as well. And nine times out of 10, they'll, they'll usually say yes. But if someone's firm on their price at $2,500, they're, they're going to say no. And then you know what you can do? You can try to see if you can find a couple more hundred dollars or go pawn something or something like that and get the extra cash. This is just the way that I've done business over the past couple of years when buying and selling motorcycles. And it seemed to work out really well. Seeing how this thing was uh, $3,000. This guy was asking $3,500 for this motorcycle when I bought it. So I got it for two grand, which is $1,500 off of what he was asking. Of course, there were some other um, circumstances that allowed me to get the bike. Uh, he needed money, and he said he can take $2,500 that day off of $3,500. So he, he already mentally came down $1,000. All I had to do was work him on the five. I said, oh man, all I've got right now is two grand in my hand and I can come right now. And that was it, it was done. Sure, I had some more money to play with. I had a couple hundred extra dollars I could have thrown around without really dipping into some money that I didn't want to. But for the sake of this argument, that's all I had. And that's how I do it. That's how you can lowball people without getting them mad at you and without having to uh, to deal with all that anger and stuff like that. Like, I mean, whether or not I know someone, I hate it when someone's mad at me for almost no reason. I hate someone, um, let's say let's say you offer someone $3,000 on a $6,000 motorcycle. They're gonna be a little upset. They're gonna be, nah, man, fuck you. I, that's less than what I got into it. And you're gonna be like, I understand. I, I apologize or, you know, because people do get offended and they kind of have every right to. I just don't like dealing with that. So this is how I avoid it. I find out people's bottom dollar and then I can work around it. The point is never to offer up front what you only have. Always be able to have room to come up. So that way you can be like, can you meet me in the middle? Can you meet me in the middle? That's usually the kicker. And that's just how I do business. You guys probably do it differently, but after years and years and years of doing this type of shit, that's what I found out works the most for me. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. 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 I'm 